Welcome to this section on vector data theory. In the previous section, we've been laying a foundation for geographic information systems by looking at how we can determine position on the planet, learning about datums and coordinate systems, and learning the very basics of cartography and map composition. In this section, the core problem that we are going to be facing is the problem of representation. We can't put geographic features into computer systems. We can only put some kind of representation of them into the computer system. This may seem like a rather obvious point, and it is, but it's also one that's very significant. If I want to conduct a GIS analysis about highways, national parks, fire hydrants, or even military engagements, I'm not going to be able to put those features themselves into the GIS. I'm going to have to represent them in some way. So to do this, we've got to use some kind of data model. A data model, for our purposes here, is just some formalized, structured, and consistent way of representing features. Basically, the data model defines the rules by which we are going to represent the data. We have two main ways of representing geographic features in a computer system, the vector data model and the raster data model. Now, some people will tell you that those are the only two ways. That may be true, and it might even be a statement that I agree with, but there are some academic arguments about whether some other ways to represent geographic features are actually different from the raster or vector data models, or if they're special cases of one or the other. For the purposes here, I don't think there's any reason to get into that argument, so instead I'll just say that we have two major ways to represent geographic features, and that way we're covered no matter how you might choose to go on some smaller details. Now there's a lot to talk about in both of these because we want to learn not only how each one of these data models represents geographic features, but also how we can use data that's stored according to either one of these models to solve problems and answer questions. In doing so, we'll also learn what kinds of problems certain representations are particularly good at solving and which ones it's particularly less suitable for. So when I was making the point earlier about not being able to put a geographic feature into a computer system, but only being able to put a representation of it into the computer system, we have to realize that the representation that we choose is going to alter the ways that we perceive the features in our GIS project, impact the kind of analysis that we can do, and it will be a major factor in determining what we can find out about the features that we're studying and what we can't. So that's why it's very important to study the methods that we have for representing geographic features. The choices that we have made about representation will be fundamental in the kinds of analysis that we can do. So when you're building a GIS data set to solve some problem or to answer some question, it's very important to represent the data in a way that will allow you to answer your question or to solve your problem. And by the way, there's no right or wrong way to represent geographic features in an absolute sense. Rather, there are only better or worse ways to represent geographic features, depending upon the purpose for which the data set is being assembled. There may be multiple ways to represent a particular geographic feature. The method of representation that you choose must be appropriate to the analysis that you're doing. For instance, we're going to be talking about geocoding and network analysis. Geocoding is the process by which a computer takes an address and puts a point on a map. Then network analysis is the process by which we could get driving directions between those two points. We'll look at both of those in detail later, but if you're interested in performing that kind of analysis, there are very certain ways that you must represent the roads in order to conduct the analysis. Specifically, they have to be represented according to the vector data model. So that brings me to the point that whether you choose to represent your data according to a vector or raster data format is one of the most fundamental questions of representation that you'll address when considering building a GIS data set. As I said, there's a lot to talk about in both of these kinds of data models. Therefore, in this section, we're going to be focused on the vector data model. We'll come back and pick up the raster model in a different set of videos, but for now, we're going to be focused on understanding the structure of the vector data model, how it can be used to represent geographic features, and then how we can use it specifically to solve problems and answer questions.